Welcome back to the Flaming Puck Podcast with me, your host, Ian the Dynamo Kelly, joined as always by my trusted co-host, Mr. Dylan Simpson. You may notice today that we are a man down, but that is because he's cleaning his barbecue and taking care of some errands. Mr. Chris Ruback will be back with us during the week, but today you've got me and Dylan. Dylan, why don't you tell the people what we have for them this week? Well, we want to talk a little bit about uh, the Flames' playoff hopes and if there really ever was any um, in the last few months anyways. And, uh, you know, just talk about how the team's doing and, and what we should do moving forward. I like the last part. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, we got to move forward somehow. We've kind of been stagnant for seven years. Well, you know, uh, you, you know tomorrow's a new day and uh, it all starts tomorrow. You know? Yeah. It all starts tomorrow. Uh, some guys in that team are smoking weed or just not giving a fuck. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe, maybe, maybe. both. Um, you know, I, I, I got on that narrative a lot where. I think guys don't give a fuck. And I think that's kind of unfortunate and probably not true. No, I it's not true. Maybe they do. Maybe, you know, there's maybe there's something going on in their lives. Maybe they just aren't as good as we thought they were. But, you know, the contracts that they signed, that's not their fault. That's, you know, that's, that's the management's fault. And, and, you know, you got to, you got to spend when you think you have something. And if you, if it turns out you didn't have it, it's too bad. (laughs) The worst part about this team is that we have had it before with these players. It's not like these players have never performed. It's actually a decline. Yeah, it Uh, it is for, for most of them. And and let's, let's, let's address the major, major two elephants in the room on that one. And you know, this one is a tough one for me to say, but money, Geo, father time is caught up with him, and it's just time that we get yep. up this, this, this. Um... And this is this is kind of a hot take for me, probably, um, because he won the Norris a couple of years back, yeah. And I'm a big fan of getting, you know, top return for the player, uh, um, and he won. I can't remember what age he was, 34, 35, something like that, when he won the Norris. And that's that's crazy. That's great. But that was the top of his trade value ever. We probably should have traded him that summer. Um, he, the story he started of the flames, regressing. Right? <laughs> Literally the day after he, he won the Norris, he started regressing. Yeah. And I called that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not not to stroke myself on that, but I, I I mean, anybody with any knowledge of of how aging generally uh, affects a player's speed and and decision making in hockey would have probably been able to say that to some extent that would happen. Probably maybe not the extent that it actually did happen, but right now we have a captain who's who plays most nights like a sixth defenseman uh, probably should be playing about 10 minutes less a game than he does. Yeah. But that's, that's what we got. Yeah. And I mean, this, this all comes back to my old friend, um, Mr. Brad Trey living doesn't know when to trade players when the time is right. And uh, like I say, uh, you know, I appreciate, <clears throat> I 100% appreciate everybody's opinion. Some people think Brad Trilliman's doing a good job. Some people think he's done a great job. Some people think he deserves another kick at the can. I think the kick of the can analogy is literally it. This Calgary Flames thing is a team is about to kick the can. That's so all we need to get done, rid of. really. And like, yeah. It's, I don't think it's for a lack of trying. You know, the no, one year we, me we neither. needed big right winger and he went out and got you know 20 to 30 goal scorer and proven playoff performer James Neal and then that just didn't fucking work did he try to to address the team's needs yes yeah but 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 did he do it (laughs) but did he do it this summer 
No. Did he do it in the in the in the in the uh, no. trade deadline last year? No. Because they said, "Oh, well, we're going to we're going to you know, all we heard this year was we're going to work on defense. We're going to get defense, defense this year." Sure, he went out and got Tanev. And sure, he went out and got Markstrom. But is the the defense better than it was last year? Um no. Oh. But that's not again. That's I'm I'm not going to sit here and and defend your living the whole time because I think he's had enough kicks at the can as as you say. Yeah. I think it's time to move on. I don't specifically think it's because he's done a horrible job. I think it's just it's just time probably for both both parties to move on and try something new. Well, that's but, a good point. Yeah, it's nobody. I mean. Anybody that said he's done a horrible job, it's not accurate. That's not true. Yeah, he's not so, done a horrible job. But that it's it's like it, the team. I think I made the analogy to you earlier. The team in seven years has actually regressed rather than progressed, and that's yeah. not just Brad Trey Living's fault. Yeah, that's that's a mix of everything. That's that's from ownership, from top level management down to the coaching well I, you know you can blame the coaching all you want but when you're you know when you got three coaches in the space of seven years it's it's not always on the coaches either because they're not necessarily yeah. going to try to build a chemistry um but it's also on the heads of the johnny goudreau's and the monies because we can talk about 99 point season goudreau but we can also talk about shitty playoff season goudreau that year too you know yeah um and and same with Monaghan, like yeah. Monaghan was a you know twenty five to thirty goal scorer for his entire career up until last year, and he was great, and and, and I love watching him. And you know, there's off years that that players can have. Um, I think it's time to move on. Is is his trade value high? No, but it's still time to try something new. We've had the same bunch of players for so long. There's some players that I would keep. I would, you know, I would try and keep guys like Lindholm. Um, I, I guess, I, I guess Tanev, you know, he's been easily our best defenseman all, all season. Um Stone's actually stepped in and done really good, but you're right when it comes to defense. He he didn't really make the team better defensively, but this is one thing that he's always done. He's always made our team better on paper. Yes. He's yes. always done that. I, I can't think of a time when he didn't make our team better on paper, like our actual NHL roster better on paper by a move that he did. And that's really unfortunate because the paper side doesn't always – you know, translate. Um, and, and like, even when he signed Rasmus Anderson to, to the extension, I can't remember what it was. I think it's around 5 million or something like that, yeah, but he 4.2 or something. Yeah. Yeah. But he, at that time, that, that extension looked like a genius move because Rasmus Anderson was, you know, looked at as the future of our blue line. He was looked at by many people as the guy who was going to step in when, once Gio, you know, stopped being a Norris caliber defenseman. And he hasn't done that this year. Did he play like that last year? Yes. Was that contract fucking awesome last year? Yeah. Is it awesome this year? Mm. You know, and it's hard because you can't, for him, he can't really see how this young guy is going to do next year or or if this off year is just one off year. You know what I mean? But like I said, I do think it's time to move on from him. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty fair. I mean, like for me, um, I look at, you know, instead of looking at what we get in return, I think if we can – I mean, I personally, I think if we get a new GM in, if we get a, <clears throat> if we get a new GM with new vision, new ways of looking at it, um, I do think we, it doesn't have to be a total rebuild. I, I still think we can keep guys like Rasmus Anderson, for example. I think we need to build a team around Chucky with giving someone like Lucic the A 
and given like Tanev or something like the A and given Chucky the captaincy and saying you're our guy, we trust you. This is this is this is your team. Give, give him the vote <coughs> of confidence maybe he hasn't had because exactly, exactly. you know you can I see we'll we'll do wonders and I think Geo Hopefully we can work something out that maybe the Kraken might take a punt on him because I think it would be a good move for the Kraken. I think it would be a good move for him. Um, he gets to go and be part of a new franchise. The Kraken get an experienced leader, a former Norris winner, as you say. Um, and, you know, we get to just part ways in the right way. Um, yeah. And then I think realistically, you know, we've got $8 million in, in, in cap space anyway with the trades that Brad has made. That's what we should have. At, as we speak so if we do get rid of johnny we do get rid of money and we do get rid of geo that's a lot of cap space and maneuverability to to make certain trades but also to look at the free agency in the uh, in the off season yeah and th- that's all good but also if you're just freeing up cap space you look at a lot of free agents um even the, the ones we signed last year let's say with uh with Tanev and Markstrom if they didn't think there was an actual chance to win here were they going to sign here probably not no so if you but, I, but I think all that's your, all of your offense yeah like that's... you know yeah but then nobody's gonna want to come and play here and they'll be like no I'll just wait for somebody else to offer me something but if they see the project <laughs> if they see, that's what I'm saying if they see a project as well dude they will, you know, look, I still think Monty could have another year there. I think he's probably the one that won't be traded. I think Johnny will. Um, just purely because he's got the longer contract and they might want to build up some more trade value in, in Monty for the following season, maybe. I'm not I'm not so sure what they're thinking on that is. But either way, in theory and on paper, it's a good idea. Um, to, to do that and look I don't think the Flames are such a stinky organization that a lot of people think that oh nobody's going to come play with us I think if if they're sold the right vision by the right guy then of course there's an opportunity there you know what I mean um, and I don't think our, our prospect pool is that shitty either we've got I mean we've got one of the potentially one of the best keepers um, you know in Wolf that in two seasons with Markstrom there, I think within two seasons, he could be ready to step up. I think we've got, um, you know, I think Peltier, the, the, the jury is still out in Peltier, whether he can, you know, step up in the league. But I, I don't know. I like what I see. I think Rosicka, without a doubt, can make can make a, a third or fourth line center without a shadow without starting off. I think Godin can play right or center. I know both of those can both of those guys can play right or center. And depending on what we get now on the draft picks, if we get something like a Genter or something like that, I mean, you know, that's a good player who probably only needs about a year down in the in the uh, in the AHL before he's ready, realistically, because he's a big guy as well. He's like what's he six two? Six, I six, think he's six one, but yeah. I, I could be wrong. But yeah, he's he's. If we can get that, like he's projected to go second, third, fourth, and and we're probably projected more of like a eighth to twelfth pick. But I've said this a couple times, uh, maybe not on the show, but it's a crap I would be, know this one, right? I'd be okay with trying to trade up. I mean, yeah, yeah. it would be nice to have. A- anything close to a generational talent. We haven't had that since, you know, the prime again, the years. And, and yeah, that's what I mean. I think Genter would have a shot of it. If we could trade up for a Genter, I think absolutely we have, we have the, the right, the right pieces there that a team might take. Um, but I mean, I think I don't necessarily think it needs to be a rebuild. I don't think we need to, you know, do a whole I don't rebuild. think so either. I think it's just a retool. Um, I mean, Bobby really Ryan, I'd be really surprised if I didn't see somebody go for a Bobby Ryan. I was saying that he's free in the off season. I think he's there. Um, we know that my boy, a lot of people, which is awesome. A lot of Flames fans have got back to us on, um, on the Duclair one. Duclair is free again in the off season. I don't think it's impossible for, to, you know, to get a Duclair. If you can promise Duclair, look, sign a three year deal with us. You're going to be our second you're going to be on a second and front line. You're going to get top six minutes. Boom. 
there you go. You know what I mean? I think there's definitely pieces there that he can bring in. I think Lindholm has solidified his place as, for me anyway, as the, as the, the, the top center, um, you know, he's, he's kind of a, almost been the, the bright spark in a, in a pretty dull season, really. Um, yeah. He's been, he's been solid. He's been solid since the minute, you know, honestly, I, I think he's been solid since pretty much the minute he was drafted by, by yeah, Carolina. Me too. me too. Um, and just gotten better and, and, you know, getting more, more time with, uh, also getting, I found he gets a little bit more offensive starts. I, that's just the eye test. I have no stat on that. That's just what I see is him getting a lot more offensive starts than maybe he used to. Yeah. Um, but somehow still playing the same amount of PK time. I, it, it's working cause he's yeah. leading him in points and, yeah. um, I think yeah. realistically, that's my vision for the field. So if someone was to say to me right now, where we are right now, Ian Kelly, what is your opinion? If if you can trade all three of Gio, Monty, and Johnny, great. If you can trade two of those pieces, great. Um, but one of the big pieces I think is Gio needs to go. I don't think he's I don't think his ability lends itself to his leadership anymore. Um, because he doesn't really lead anything. It's it's always, it's the usual thing. It's hit it to the blue line. Boom, he's going to take that stupid slap shot. Whereas Michael Stone has a better shot than him. But it's like, oh, give it to me. I know what to do here, eh? I know he what to do here, barely eh? takes slap shots. He tries to sneak in and, and take that wrister. That, that wrister, the wrister won is what Norris I mean. Yeah, sorry. But... Like honestly, that that wrister won him that Norris Trophy because he's yeah, but but not now it doesn't. It, but he's he's just being a little slow with it now, and and it's getting blocked, and it's not going high; it's going into shin pads. And but he has no plan that B, dude. Happens with age. That's fine. It's, it's not his fault that he's getting played. I understand. It's not his fault that he's getting played, but at the same well, time, he doesn't have anybody else to step up and play his minutes, and that's that's one of the problems. Like that is a huge problem. Anderson yeah. was supposed to. Hannafin's hurt now, which that looked really bad. Yeah, um, yeah, we called it that night, didn't we? It was the it was the knee. I think it was both of us that said it was whatever way he went down. It looked it looked. Well, it could have been anything, man. It's he's got a shoulder like like his shoulder was limp afterwards when he went down he twisted his knee he smashed his head off the ice and all three of those things could have been it could be all three of those things yeah we don't really absolutely know. yeah um but they all looked bad <laughs> no they did i mean um, i guess i guess for me i always look at the knee straight away because it's my first go-to, you know, <laughs> coming from a wrestling background or whatever. I'm like, oh, not the knee, not the knee. But uh, no, it, it was uh, it was pretty nasty. But I think going forward, I think we 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 look at you know what somebody's going to join us here on this right now. Um, but uh, we, we, this is a surprise, and we're here. There he is. He's in the car. Chris is joining. Oh, he's driving today. Chris, Chris heard Brad Man. say his name and he said, you know what, I'm going to join in on this bad boy. Yeah, I need, I, need to, I, need to, I need to throw in my two cents. I'm sorry, gentlemen. What a day. What a day. <laughs> well, we're live, Chris. So why don't you, um, why don't you actually, what we were just talking about there actually was, we, we, we understand that. So we basically said that Trey is pretty much got to be gone at the end of the year. It's got to be, it's got to be Trey, but, I mentioned to Dylan that I think it's got to be Gio, Monty, and Johnny have got to go. Just just to free up that cap space, if nothing else. And I don't think it necessarily all needs to be thrown in a blender and we just fucking rebuild. I think if we get rid of that, get the cap space in, we can at least retool. Um, and I know yeah. it might not be realistic to get rid of all three, but you know, if Monty was the one that we kept out of the two, you know, at least you've got, I guess, a second, a decent second line center, I suppose, going into. into yeah, that. second or third. Second or third. I, Maybe switching with I, Backlund, right? Yeah, that's always my thought. I, I find, I think Backlund's a better center myself. Me too. Um, you know, it's, it's, especially as far as 200 feet go. Um, oh. I, I mean, I, I do agree with you. I think, uh, I think Brad is, is, it's run its course, right? He's, yeah. he's tried and failed. 
is what it is. No hard feelings. You know, let's let's get the team going where yeah. it needs to go again. He's not solely uh, to blame, though. Yeah, yeah, I agree. No, no, not at all, not at all. And, and you know, and I do agree. You know, with, with Johnny, if there if if there's no if there's no contract to be extended this summer, absolutely get rid of him. Um, but the, with that being said, if there is a contract, it's going to be for more money than what he's playing for right now. So with Johnny, which is even more of it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's my biggest thing. Some somebody on uh, on Flame Sub, shout out Flame Sub on Facebook, mm-hmm. um, was saying like, if Johnny wants to stay, we want to keep him. And yeah, you know what? I'm fine with keeping Gaudreau if he wants to stay. If he if he signs, if he resigns at the same thing he's making right now, I'm happy. If yeah. he signs for half a million more, I'm not happy. Yeah, that's I have no problems with how he plays usually. I just have, well, I, I do because he's, you know, he's small and he plays like it, but that's right. he's very offensively gifted, but he's just not the, the guy, you know, he needs a, yeah. the guy in order to really flourish. I think. Yeah. You and, don't build your team around Johnny Cadreau. No, no. And that's why I think like selling him off to a team that, that might be more um, playoff bound would be, would have been a great idea getting like a younger guy and giving, you know, giving Johnny a chance to prove that he could be the guy with another guy. Because he's never right. had that other guy. He's just had Monaghan standing in the slot his whole career. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's um, fair. And that's not that's not bad because Monaghan scored thirty goals how many times and and all that type of stuff. But that's all he ever did. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's right, and it's the same thing, right? Once teams figure out how to defend that, you know, obviously their production is going to go down unless you're doing something exceptional to to get around it. And you know, uh, on occasion Johnny can do that. We all know that Sean can't do something exceptional to create anything. Yeah. But he, you know, he's, he's the recipient of somebody that, that can, you know, outmaneuver most, most people in the NHL, yep. which is, which is fine. That's his role. That's, but it, but I mean, let's be honest, it's not top line, you know, material, you know, if, you know, if we can free up that, what's, what's Monaghan at uh, six two five. Uh, six two five, yeah. Like they're, yeah. They're both on very similar contracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. six two. Five. Yeah, I think Johnny signed for what Geo is at six seven five. I think. <clears throat> so then, yeah. uh, you know, if we if we can get rid of three and a half million dollars, sorry, thirteen and a half million dollars, um, you know, that's that, that that paves the way for for decent signing, right? So we're not yeah, throw uh, throw re- Geo's. Um cap into that as well and then that's no that's what i mean and that's what i mean like do you know if we if we instantly you know if we're, if we're trading johnny and, and and uh geo that's 13 and a half million yeah. right there yeah sorry you know yeah or or even sean sean and geo you know i think i think geo and one of those two at the very least because yeah. automatically you've got around eight already <clears throat> in in mm-hmm. in the bank thanks to the trades that were made on the trade deadline and what we've got coming up. So I think it's, I think we're going to, as we stand, I think we're, we've got about eight cap space. Right. Add 13 million to that. Good Lord. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you can get some big pieces in there without needing to rebuild in my opinion. And yeah. Possibly make some big trades as well. And I yeah, don't think and- it's specifically like trading Johnny and Geo for futures You've gone silent there, Dylan. But that's okay. There it is. <clears throat> I think, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, oh. we brought in Daryl Sutter, and he's definitely not going to be part of a rebuild. And, you know, and we already we already know that our, our ownership core uh, has basically come out and said that rebuild isn't even an option. So retooling is is the best thing we have to go 
as it is right now. And so, you know, we're, we're going to have to lose some of those favorite players to, to make that happen. Right. Cause we, we, we've had the same core since 2015. Yeah. Yeah. You know, aside from a couple of additions. Um, and, you know, it's been, it's been a, a roller coaster ride ever since. We've, well, you know, that's we've been it. out we, of we, uh, first we, round one time in that. Yeah. So, we mentioned off, off air there. Um, <laughs> well, just, just before you come on, actually, Chris, uh, that this year you've got Bobby Ryan, who's going to be on the free. I think you can get him easily. Um, definitely on a one-year contract for sure uh, at a reasonable price um, one of the guys that I mentioned which gave us we got a lot of positive feedback was uh, Anthony Duclair he's also going to be on a free this year I think if you gave him the right right amount of money for like a two three year contract because he's relatively young um, that's a guy that I would be willing to invest money in a two or three year contract purely because I think he does play big and I think if he if he builds a chemistry in in a, in a top six line, whether it be, you know, on the first or the second, I think that's a good investment. Um, there's a lots, lots of great players, but I also think, as Dylan made a great point earlier, uh, Genter, Dylan Genter is obviously a guy that is a highly sought yeah. after prospect. I think he would fit into the Calgary narrative 100 million percent, and Dylan mentioned that we could – you know, we could definitely make moves to make sure that we get him in that trade. You know what I mean? We could. Yeah. Depending on, on what team has that pick or whatever, you know, some teams might not be interested in what we have to add to our pick sure. in order to get that high of a pick. We could luck out and win the lottery, but I'm where we are, our chances are pretty fucking low. Well, that's why we just got to fucking – <laughs> we just got to bomb it from now on, from here on out. Well, we come on. Like. Well, I mean, we've got what six games left. It's it's been Calgary's thing. Like, like we can't even lose right. You know yeah. what I mean? We go in these little mini heaters just before the end of the season and end up ninth or tenth, draft poorly. Yeah. And you know, rinse and repeat. Let's do it again next year. Oh, we made playoffs this year. Great. We ended up eighth. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. And like like you said, we got six games left. I'm I'm just gonna pull this up because I uh, want to make sure I have the exact right numbers here. Um, yeah, we we have six games left, and so does Montreal and Winnipeg, and they are eight and and ten points ahead of us respectively, um, with six games left. Pretty much that means. In order for us to catch Montreal, I think we have to win all of them, and Montreal has to lose all but two. Right. And then we're tied. Like, that, it just doesn't, yeah, doesn't seem isn't. very realistic. Yeah, let's be time. realistic. Let's be realistic. Yeah. It just ain't going to happen. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, because it's like we go on a two-game streak, and then it's like, uh, it's back to it's back to normality now, you know. And then we get, as we said, we get Sean Monaghan. Starts tomorrow. How does it? That's great, Sean. I'm pretty sure it started a long fucking time ago. Thanks for that. Yeah, every, you know? every day it starts tomorrow. It's, it's like Groundhog Day with him. My my favorite thing about, crazy, about that whole thing is he always says, "You know what I mean? It starts tomorrow." And it's like, yes, we do know what you mean, but. Do you know what you yeah, mean? Yeah, do you know what you mean? Yeah. Because it doesn't seem like you know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if, you, if you know what I mean. Says, if says, you, get, you, know if you I get my drift. <laughs> if, you, if, if you get my drift, there are money hands, right? Do hey, you money, know? Uh, can I have some of what you're smoking there, money? Because you seem awfully <laughs> relaxed there, kid, eh? <laughs> oh, he's always calm. He's always calm, yeah. He was just, he was just raised that way. Oh no, I get it. I get it. I like the kid. I, I'll never, I'll never hate fucking money, but good lord. Oh, I don't. He's done I don't. Things I don't. Franchise. He really has. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like I, I don't think I've ever hated any player that's ever played for us. Me neither. Me neither. You know, ex except for I mean, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna go there, but um, you know, you know, it's just like you know when, when we trade players, right? You know, I, I don't wish them ill. You know, they're just they're not part of my team anymore. I, I don't give a shit. Sam Bennett's anyone. good though, right? Who? Sam Bennett. Who's that? Uh, is that who's like is that East Coast? Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, a Florida guy. That. 
<laughs> he's some Florida he's, guy. He's 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 on a team that is that I couldn't care less about. Exactly. I couldn't care less about at the exactly. start of the season. Still couldn't care less. Today. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what's Florida, dude? What? Do, I mean, that's yeah. the whole state. That's the whole state. Why? Why not? Like, which part of Florida mm-hmm. you're representing? I'm sure, like Tampa Bay, well, feel really left out. They're like, but what about us? Well, <laughs> well, it's pretty sad when Florida is the second best team in Florida. Yeah. Well, imagine if Ottawa's name was actually like their their team name was actually the city they're in. The the, yeah, the Canada sure. Senators. Yeah, like imagine, like imagine, <laughs> imagine like Alberta, Al- the Alberta Flames. Oh, and we've also got oh, the Oilers. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't. I think we. I think we should make that change. Let's take it over. Yeah, I think so. Let's Alberta just go. Let's just do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's lots I mean, of they, in our days. We should just get Edmonton to separate. Yeah, just yeah. go. Yeah. I've been trying to get Edmonton to separate for decades, man. man. Right. <laughs> we'll just we'll just blend I mean, the Edmonton Oil Kings into one with the Oilers and just let them be down at the AHL. Be fine. In the WHL, but then then they'd have Genther. WHL, yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, right. you know what they would, but then McDavid <laughs> would want to leave because <laughs> he'd be playing. Maybe in he'd stop WHL. sticking his elbows in everybody's that face. Not pretty good. No, I think. Um, I think I suppose, guys, in closing this week, it's been a tough week as a Flames fan because every time you do get a glimmer of hope, then you get just, you know, a big bucket of shit thrown in your face. And, and that's what we had on um, on Saturday. Um, get, a, get, a, last, get a Crosby uh, stick in the gut. Yeah, yeah. That, that last yeah. Uh, game against Edmonton there, that was, uh, I mean, everybody on the team knew that it was – a must win and i guess what you do when you're playing a must win game is go ahead and play about 25 minutes out of 60 and hope that 25 is what i had marked down to yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, 20 25 whole minutes and sporadically spread out you know amongst the 60 minute game but in all honesty well same same to the networks to all the hockey networks um you know for me as an irishman watching it as well Hang your head in shame and fuck you with your absolute ridiculous, ridiculous bias and fucking blindness <laughs> of calling out that piece of shit, Connor McDavid. Because, yes, he is one of the best players in the league. I'm still a Sidney Crosby guy, Sid the kid all the way. Um, yep. Yes, he is one of the best players in the league, but he is a piece of shit. And it shows that with the underhanded elbow with Lucic, because if they were staring eye to eye, he wouldn't do that. He's a piece of shit, and he's playing for the right team. Yeah. And yeah, they kind of got a thing. Was it Cocky and Emmy? He he did that too. That that blind. Was. That's exactly who. And, was. Yeah. And yeah. you know what really bothers me about both situations is the one on Lucic. I still haven't seen it because my stream of the game was lagging. And I missed it. And then they didn't replay it the rest of the game because it's McGee. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Even, and, the, even the Calgary and, team won't won't do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And like the, the elbow that he had on Kotki and Emmy, they showed so many replays of it, but it was from behind. Like, like how many fucking cameras do they have? And yeah. they only <laughs> show the one that doesn't show. You can't even yeah. see his elbow. You can't yeah, you even can't see, see the contact. It. It, it it's from an angle where you can't even see Kotki and Emmy's head or McDavid's elbow. Was your was your favorite female commentator on that night as well, Dylan? I don't know. I have <laughs> I'm no. Sure, I'm, I have sure, no I'm sure. I'm sure. But I also watch the game and and call it by myself. I can watch it and ignore it most of the time. Yeah. I'm only, I'm only, I mean, just don't forget, we got to get some of our fans riled up here too. <laughs> those, those, those Edmonton homers, as I call them, you know, the ones that are calling the game uh, on Saturday, they're just terrible. But I mean, is it, but are they worse than the Singh Cassie combo to mm-hmm. Oiler fans? Like, yeah. you know, they, 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 that's who they have broadcasting for our games, and they're both known Oiler fans. Well, of course they are. can't say Cassie's an Oiler fan, but she sure is, she sure does like herself some McDavid. Well, she ain't she ain't no fucking Flames fan anyway. That's for sure. Um, she just yeah. likes Flames dick. 
that has money on it. That's about it. Uh, and I can say that because that's our show. <laughs> I think he, I, honestly, I think she kind of um, tries hard not to be a Flames homer because her husband works for the Flames. But she's not a Flames yeah, homer. That's the thing. That's But she's actually not. So, yeah, you know, but, but, because... You couldn't, you couldn't be, you couldn't be that, like, there's always, if, if you are a real fan, there's always going to be a little bit of bias that steeps out. She oh, absolutely tries her best to show that she's not, like, she's just, anyway, she's, what she's achieved in the, in the game is, is more than most guys sitting on the couch criticizing her. I agree. But, absolutely. Uh, All. But at the same time, yeah. but at the same All. time, fuck her. Um, I hate my game. <laughs> yeah i don't know the other thing is I, I find a lot of people criticize a lot of the the commentators because they you know quote unquote ride mcdavid's dick or whatever the whole game but the thing is is their job is to call the fucking game you see yeah. the best player on the ice at the very least if you're not talking about them you're not doing your fucking job that's right and don't forget as well <laughs> let's be real as well this is all about marketing you know what I mean? Like, no, it is about marketing, hundred percent. But you know, when, when you had the game, the game before you know, the last one against Edmonton, when you have Backlund once again keeping McDavid off the score sheet as well as Drysaddle, why aren't they talking about that? They yep. should, because Backlund's the only one who can do it ever, yep. and like it's not like he does it every day, every game because you can't. But he's yeah. done it many times. He's done it twice this year. He's done it so many times over the past four whatever years yeah and like if i was if mcdavid like elbowed if mcdavid elbowed lucci or sorry backland i'd be like i get it and if backland wants to drop the gloves with fucking mcdavid i'm like okay i'm that's a that's, that's a, a coin flip that's a coin toss that's his level okay. but elbowing lucci <laughs> come on dude although lucci uh, did you see that little trip on dry side i thought that was pretty Pretty neat, to be fair. I thought it was a nice little. Yeah, and the, and the, and uh, didn't Sing call that a slew foot? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it's uh, like I, I don't know, maybe maybe he's just confused with terms. That's fine. I mean, it was definitely a trip. Oh, it was a trip, but uh, you know, there was there was no elbow in that game, according to uh, even the flames, fucking, even the flames commentary. There was no elbow there. So even 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 know. watching the, uh, the they showed they showed Luch doing that. For yeah. about twenty seconds after, maybe, after the maybe album. we should be the new uh, commentary team there. And get a get get some get some flames perspective on it, right? So let's be honest. Though. <laughs> Let, let's be honest. Do you think Cassie shits on the team? <laughs> Imagine if the right? three of us were fucking watching one of their lackluster. Yeah, did you, I know. On the I know. <laughs> yeah, you, Ian, Ian, you're you're gonna have to come over and sit in sit in my uh, flames room and and watch me during a game one time because. I mean, I don't think they would appreciate on Sportsnet me, you know, every five minutes going, oh, for fuck's sake, Johnny, get your head out of your ass. Well, you know what I'll like do? That. I'll just be like, yeah, I'll be like the Gorilla Monsoon back in the day. Do you remember in the WWF? Would you stop, Chris? <laughs> yeah. I like, yeah. If, come on, I pass, it, pass I've it. had to really tone that down since I moved into this place because the, the dog gets a little afraid when I'm actually. Uh, you know, she'll run into the other room and I won't see her for the hour and that makes me feel real bad so I, I, instead yeah. I just don't do it as much now but uh, I my used dog, to my dog loves the hockey scream my at my TV the, the worst was the bump back pass on the fucking power oh. play every single power play I'd stand up when when it started and I'd watch it happen and then I'd just start yelling for the remainder of the two minutes so <laughs> so speaking of speaking of power play um buddy of mine this morning, uh, named Jordan, um, made, uh, mentioned something today, and it's and it's hundred percent accurate. This, you know, successful power plays do an umbrella, you know, so they can do short passes, go back and forth, get set up for that shot, take the shot, and then they collapse in, you know, get that greasy goal or potentially pass it back, depending on what what ha- happens with the play. And the yeah. Flames, through five different coaches and coaching staff have consistently done the four corners for yeah. doing these long passes, sometimes trying to do diagonally across and wondering why we can only get one baby shot on net and not, and you know, 
half the time they're, you know, they're deflecting the puck out of the zone or shooting it down because they're intercepting the play. You know, like successful power plays run a certain way. You know, they, they can pass crisp, they're short passes, they're quick, they're on the tape, they move, it, 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 and it flows. Mm-hmm. Where ours is just so... Them really do. And oh. I, I mean, I, I think I mentioned this last week, but it's the same with... Uh, it's kind of the same as my theory on why guys like Levo and Simone and, and those guys don't really work that well with, with our top players, our top players. Um, and that's because they're grinders. But if you have Levo and Crosby like they did on that, or sorry, not Levo, uh, Simone and Crosby like they did on that power play, Crosby is by far, in my opinion, the best grinder in the game. Mm-hmm. I, I think there's only one answer. To that. I, think the, I think the only answer to that is you keep Simone and you go and out you and get you get Crosby. Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just want to recap well, there. I'm we're going to keep, keep, <laughs> we're, we're keep the guy that hasn't played since the 15th of March. Yep. Got it. And then we'll just, so, we'll just so go all in get, on Crosby. So that you get the best fucking guy in the league. <laughs> <laughs> and you bring him back to Canada. <laughs> Take him yeah, out yeah. of the hole, Pittsburgh. Come on. Yeah, but yeah. But he's married. Our guys he's married. <laughs> and and oh. that, that's what you have to be able to do in order to do that four corner, like you were talking about. Yeah. Um, you need guys who can grind on your power play. Maybe that's why our second power play unit is often better than our first power play unit because they have Lucic and, and Richie and whoever else that's actually grinding. And, exactly. and can do that style. But like we've always said, Goudreau relies on many times, not all the time, but many times he relies on rushes and he relies on on um, pretty passing plays and, and not crashing the net. And yeah. maybe that's why, you know, nobody's ever crashing the net on the fucking power play. It drives me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, yeah it really does. I mean, I'm... aside from from Kachuk maybe getting into Smith's kitchen a little bit, you know, last game. But I mean, other than that, like, where's our presence in front of the net? Like, Kachuk was just doing it behind the net. Like, where's our in front of the net presence? You know, well, that that's his now. Know, that he that... stands beside the thing, and he and he tries to go between the legs and do the same shot every time he gets the puck beside the net. And like, we know he can. He's he's done it a few times, but. It's got to be sure. part of the arsenal, not the whole arsenal. I, that's yeah. going to be, for an, any regular listeners, that's going to be something you hear me say a lot about a lot of players and some of the things yeah. they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, same as I mean, he he, he did that uh, that ass hit again the other night. Yeah, yeah, I noticed and, it. And and just a brutal attempt at it too. Like it was. No, like it I know, I know. But I think I honestly do. <laughs> and I said it at the start of this show. And I really do, and I and I I will take this to the bank with me. And if I'm if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But it's got to be at least tried before um, we can we can, I suppose, judge it. The whole idea of Chucky being our next leader, being our captain, I think it's got to happen this year. I think you got to be given an A to the likes of Chucky. I think you got to be given an A to the likes of Tanev and to the likes of Lucic, and you got to build the team around Chucky. What, the guy is twenty three years old. Do not put one bad season down as, you know, that's the end for Chucky because that's bullshit because guys like Gio, guys like Johnny, guys like Monty, in my opinion, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm almost 100% that they're the guys that probably told him to calm it down a little bit, you know, tone it down a little bit. We don't, there doesn't have to be drama all the time. These are the guys that need to be gone yesterday in my opinion yeah on no, off no, ice no, drama no. is not how you win cups on ice drama is how you win cups exactly. and kachuk has not done it this year absolutely he has not done it this yeah, year i agree um the rest of the entirety of his career basically every single game that's what he did yeah. and yeah. if he doesn't still have like i if he comes back next year and doesn't do that for a month, then I'll probably be ready to be like, okay, what the fuck? Yeah. But this is 
one bad season where it seemed like the entire fucking team or like at least some of the leadership were against what he did. Well, Elia Friedman, Elia Friedman, Elia Friedman, who's a man who I do respect a lot, actually, as yep. a broadcast journalist. And he doesn't really deal with rumored innuendo. He's usually got something concrete to go by. He's usually got yeah, his sources to- are good. Yeah, he yeah. is the most trusted source in hockey. Exactly. I think. And he said that there was something in that Muslim incident. Didn't want right. to get into specifics, but there was something, and there was something said within that locker room, and it came yeah. from upper tier level players. Now, yeah. let's look at the upper tier level players. It's yeah. and, you know there's leaks there, and I think fucking Geo should have just been said fuck off home. That's fine. You just stay where you are until the cracking come around, and you can you can go and tell them not to do that. For me, I think it's um, it's without a doubt it, it it's affected Chucky's season um, because I think you, I heard Brad Baru say it as well. Um, shout out to Brad Baru, by the way, who's going to be on our show pretty soon. Um, another member of the Flames Hub, um, the Flames Unfiltered podcast, which you can also check out on Spotify. He mentioned, and I agree. I think when Chucky is on it, he is the best center at, at playing in front of the goalie. Forget about the little flick he's under. Winner, but yeah. Forget about the flick under the under the legs. On yeah. his day, he's one of the best in the league at it. You know yeah. what I mean? Without a shadow. Oh, yeah, he doesn't mind taking a beating, right? No, no, not at all. And this year, it's like he's like, right, well, you told me to calm down, so I'm going to calm down. It's like he's just saying, right, fuck you guys, I'm going to expose you. Definitely here. shouldn't have, like, like if any manager, if if Brad Tree Living. Or if if uh, Daryl Sutter, or probably if Jeff Ward, if he kept doing that and there were players upset about it, I think even Jeff Ward probably would have told those players to go fuck themselves. Yeah, I, I agree. I you know what I mean? Agree. He shouldn't have. I mean, you gotta, I guess, respect your friends a little bit or whatever. But I, he should have just continued to play his game. Who was it? Mike Johnson or Johnstone or whatever. He's one of the guys from um, uh, NBC Sports, I think. I could be totally wrong on that. But he used to play, um, and he told me, he told a story on um, on TV the other day that I heard. I think it was when we were playing Montreal. And he was saying that when he got into the league, one of the the guys one of the leaders on his team told him something that always stuck with him when he was just up for a cup of coffee or whatever um and that was you got called up for a reason you play a game this is your game that is how you should play that is what we that's what management saw in you when they called you up that's what management saw in you when they drafted you fucking play that game and you'll be fine that's why we drafted a guy with the last name of fucking Kachuk. And this is this we is, need that player. Exactly. This is where my problem with Brad Trey Living comes in. He's the manager of the whole organization, right? You know, with hockey affairs. Yeah. He should have been down there and said, Who the fuck said this? You boom. Yeah. You're out. You, you're out. You, if you got in it. What's your issue? Like, I mean, Johnny Gaudreau can't talk shit. I mean, he's the biggest pussy other than playing fucking, you know, playing his game. He he, he cannot be telling players how they should be physically when the guy right. literally ducks out of everything. You know what I mean? And like, That's how right. many times has Chucky come to bail Johnny out? You know, when he gets hit or when he gets hurt or when somebody's aiming for him. So I think it's, I think it's quite clear something happened there. And I think it's also quite clear that Brad Tree Living has failed as a manager that he didn't deal with that situation and just nip it in the bud because it obviously yeah, wasn't nipped in the bud. He should have yeah, been. Even, even should have been. Said it, those players only meetings, they last for a couple days. Yeah. That that's something Ward said. And maybe that's something he shouldn't have said. Um, maybe he should have given more trust to his players or whatever. I I, I don't fucking know. But th- that's just how I feel about it. 
Yeah, me too. Go ahead, Chris. No, I, I just I agree. I mean, like they, obviously, they, like they haven't played like a team since well the beginning of the season. Um, at least you know the last you know, ten games in is kind of when things really started to look bad as far as the group. really bad, really bad, right? And we got and, called out. I, I think all three of us got called out that even though we were winning games because Markstrom was fucking winning us games, and Riddick even was winning us games. Um, yep. we got called out a whole shitload for saying this is bad. We are winning. We don't deserve to win. This is bad. Yep. If this continues, yeah. this is going to be bad. We're going to miss the playoffs. 10, yep. 15 games into a 56 game season. We all got fucking told by oh, yeah. so many we games did. fans over oh, being negative. And now they're like coming back at us. Like, yeah, actually you <laughs> were right. <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, yeah. The apology line starts over here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, I mean, well, we saw we saw what was coming because yeah. you know you can't just in, in in like in any season you can't just creep past teams constantly. You know what I mean? You can't just no. get you can't just get by. You can't just get by, and that's what you that's the point that you made, Dylan, early on as well, which made me see it personally. Um, I was like, there's no way that if we keep playing the way we're playing, that we're not going to be found out. And that's exactly yeah. what we got found out. Yeah. It, Mark yeah, well, that's being the savior. And then we started, and then we went on fucking how many losing streaks? Like, yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, we over overplayed Markstrom. And so he gets, you know, tired out and then, you know, ends up with an injury. So then, you know, then we're doing mm -hmm. the same thing to, to Riddick. And, and expecting one player to bail out the entire team. That's it's not, not going to happen. It's not That's fair. Not... You know, and, and, and we've been doing it. We've been doing it this way for, for, well, as far as I'm like 30 years. You know what I mean? Like, like we've, we've had just such shit teams over 30 years and relied on Golden. We relied like, on. The Calgary Flames were dog shit until Kiprasov came to town. And all yeah. of a sudden, we're in a cup final. And, and, and what every did we time, do every year after, every right? time it wasn't Kippersoft saving the game, it was Aginla saving the game. Every time it wasn't right. Aginla, it was Kippersoft. Sometimes it yeah. was both of them. Two but players, right? You're relying on two fucking guys. And don't get me wrong, I love the the Jelenas and the the Conroys 100%. and the Tangays. Tangays, one of my fucking favorite players of all time. Um, yeah. The years and all those on all these guys. It was always those two fucking guys that yep. hold out the clutch performances we don't have clutch guys anymore damn straight damn um, straight. No, we sure you, don't. Still, you, you should have more than two clutch guys and no. we have zero <laughs> that's right yeah two two clutch guys that play with passion and heart and will put it all on the line every single game yeah who do we have that does that kind of up until yeah, Tanev. up until up until this season, we had Kachuk. and no, I can't think of anybody I think, else. I think this season we've had a little bit of it with Lucic. I know Man, he's you, older. I I have zero complaints about Lucic game this year. Yeah, um, he's 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 got that resurgence. He's you know he's he's liking the game, loving the game again. Though I mean the the last game he didn't play well, but that's okay. No. He's, he's allowed. He's allowed to do that. Well, but sometimes, um, but no, sometimes it, you're a product of your environment as well, and that's what we've said. Sure. Before, you know, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Luch has been good. You know, this year, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I've never been one of those people that worries about what a contract looks like. Me neither. Like, like I'm, you know, what can you do on the ice? That's that's what I care about. That's all I care. about. I don't care what your contract one of the is. only two, three players on the whole team who has done more than his fair share this year. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And yep. even sure, like you said, contracts shouldn't matter once they're on the ice. And, you know, even with the amount of money he makes, his, his leadership. Um, invaluable. Is it's, in, it's invaluable. Actually, I, um, I'm going to pull this up right now. Just, just one second. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to talk about this. I had a, um, 
I did a a poll in in the Flames Hub a uh, couple a few days ago about how much money you would how much money would be fair to play or to pay Lucic for the job he's done this year if you were signing him next season to to a contract which, which we're not this is all hypothetical yeah. but uh, we had a lot of people um um uh, here it is we had a lot of people uh, comment on it and you know we had over 200 votes and out of over 200 votes 109 people said that they would pay luch teach a three million dollar contract there you go and i'm totally on board with that there were 17 people who said 3.5 million and 27 people who said 1.5 million and that was the top three um now he makes we're Six. paying him like five something and yeah. that's that's too much whatever sure. but the fact that 109 people still think that the bottom six forward should be paid three million dollars is yeah it says the intangibles that that this guy brings that's true that's true but if you but when you, when you look at that list though i bet you every single one of them thinks that bennett should have been on the first line too but that's uh that's near here there, there. <laughs> No, I, I agree. I mean, he's, he's he would be a really, really, really good three million dollar player. Absolutely. This year, you know, last year he was still kind of coming into it, right? You know, the year before that in Edmonton, he was terrible. He, he didn't want to be there. It was clear, right? He didn't. He wasn't be liked. <laughs> I don't think he was liked by his teammates, and he really wasn't liked by the fan base. But right. when he came over to Calgary, I think there were still some fans that didn't really like him. But I think pretty quick people started coming around and I think the team really liked having him around even when he wasn't producing because right. that was a presence that the team needed. The Oilers yeah. have Cashy. The Oilers had Cashy in that whole, I think that whole time. You know what yeah. I mean? Lucic brought leadership, knowledge, championship, um, and and physicality yeah toughness and yeah toughness grit. grit and heart and that's 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 all you need i mean obviously Listen, it's not all you need but those I love, things i love number 17 you know you know how i feel about the guy i think um i think having him in i know i got into a bit of a debate with somebody in the flames hope the other day not going to call him out for names but they were saying oh you got to get rid of lucic at the end of the year along i was like get rid of lucic just to free up cap space. It was like that experience, if we are going to retool, is going to be invaluable. You're getting rid of experience like Giordano, then you got to have your leadership yeah. from somewhere. And that that's that's where Lucic can step into this new look. Like under oh, the right. Sutter regime as well. Like, come on, Lucic is a given to be in. Yeah. You know. That's some sort of leadership role, yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. Who, who do you want to who do you want to have uh, teaching the kids how to be tough on on ice yeah Goudreau no Monahan no. no I'd rather have 17 every day and here's the thing like like Mangiapane I'd, I'd probably put put him up there but he's still a fucking kid yeah he but played. look I, I guarantee you Mangiapane and I've watched it as well since Mangiapane has been around especially on lines with Luch his toughness is just growing and growing and growing. His grind he's is growing, to and his growing, own. growing. You know, yeah, he's he, really coming to his own. This is the well. I don't think we've ever been able to fault his uh, his work his ethic, will his ethic. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, he's always been there for, for work ethic. But him playing with Luch has benefited him. That's that's the point I'm yeah. making. Oh yeah, yeah. sure it is. Yeah, hundred percent it does. The only thing that doesn't benefit him is is his size, unfortunately. And he still plays like the like he's you know six seven inches taller than he is. I love him. I love the kid. I love the kid. Um, yeah. I yeah. suppose we should try wrap it up, but um, realistically, yeah. because we're recording this now on a Monday, um, it's nighttime over here in Ireland. It's it's midday over there in Calgary, and. Um, we this when you when you watch this it's going to be tuesday so uh, 
we're, we're getting ahead of the game now by getting it up uh, a lot quicker than we have previously. So thanks for bearing with us. But um, we're obviously next week, we're going to, um, and probably during the week, we'll probably try and get a show um, going. And obviously Chris is going to be doing his, uh, his big giveaway. Um, yeah. Still, still haven't been tagged in anything. So I need yeah. people to start sharing it. We I've, do. I've, I've got one so far. Do you? Yep. Sweet. Cool. Okay, good. We got one name in the hat so far. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> easy, it's an easy draw. Yeah. It's not me. <laughs> no, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tag it on the Flames Hub as well, just to, to kind of get it out there too um, uh, and make sure that people are aware of it. But, um, yeah, we're going to obviously. There's, there's 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 not really much of a game now until when's the next game? I believe it's on Thursday or Friday. Thursday. Thursday, I think. I think, I think there's one tomorrow. Is it tomorrow yeah. or Thursday? I thought it was Thursday. Is there is no? Sorry, it's it's Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday is the Jets. Right. Wednesday is the Jets. So maybe we'll maybe and, we'll and do then it. not again till the weekend. So. Yeah, so we might record on Friday and we'll do a reaction to the Jets as well and see. But I think what we're going to do on Friday is actually we're going to do some polls. And what we might do is we might try and get some Flames fans on and maybe get like two or three of you on and um, maybe That'd talk be- about and, and, and maybe if you come on and you tag Chris uh, or me or Dylan or and it's got to be the Flame and Poke as well. Um, you you can also get your name in the hat for for the flag, and I think what would be really cool is for people to come on and give their best, sell us their best pitch as to how we we rebuild or we we basically how we retool, I guess, in the off season. Yeah. Whether it be from a from a management perspective or a player perspective, just in general, we want to hear your you know ideas on what you would do to uh you know to make the flames better next season um whether that be keep gm brad whether it be get rid of brad whether it be get rid of johnny money it doesn't matter i think that would be really cool to hear from some of you guys because you give us a lot of great feedback and we appreciate it but it'd be nice to hear the voices of some of you so dylan i think we should try and get that set up and maybe get some people on and um i like that can can work on that yeah some some more fans by the fans for the fans absolutely because yep. that's, that's like exactly it. what we are you know what i mean that's yep. what, we, we are your famous podcast guys and um i suppose until next week you've got mr ruback looking pretty awesome there and his uh in his nice sexy car with that flames yep. uh, uh yeah. that. Yep. there we go <laughs> you too can own that for the small price of uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah just uh, 60 60 grand for the truck and it's all yours <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh then you've obviously got iggy and backland over there you got sweden and canada coming together in one 12 and 11 baby 12 and 11 um and i guess for me i'm over now you guys want to add anything before we go i don't think so sorry i was late today gentlemen and uh, i feel you severely underdressed. So oh no worries, man. We, we, uh, you still look good to me, baby. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Glad you showed up. Absolutely. Um, but I think until until next week, we're over and out. And um, like we say, catch us on the Flame and Puck on Facebook, and of course, join Flames Hub as well. You're gonna find all of our stuff there. And uh, if you have any suggestions at all, please like, subscribe, and comment on all of our videos. Please share when you can. And uh, subscribe to the uh, Dynamo Podcast Network. And uh, for me, Ian Dynamo Kelly, for Chris Ruback, for Dylan Simpson, that is all we have time for this week.